what is good and what is evil. Have you ever thought about that? You know, before Adam and Eve, before they committed sin in the Garden of Eden, God saw them, they are good. Because when God created a human being, God said, it is very good. Good. Their being, human being, their being itself is good. Because God says so. But after they commit a sin, after they break down before God, what happened? You know, before they commit a sin, all their things like sleeping, drinking, eating, talking, breathing, everything is good. They didn't know that what is evil, what is bad. Because God himself is good and God said to the Human being, you are good. But after they commit a sin, they, they tell which one is good and which one is bad. Think about it. But after their decision to what is good and what is evil is by their own standard. For example, in communion, um, do you know the Stalin? in the Soviet Union. He said, it is good to kill 75 million people. He killed all of them. Because it is good in their view. What about communists in China, Mao Zedong? He said, it is good to kill 75 million people. He killed 75 million people. This is a long time ago. What about Hitler? He said, this is justice and good to kill all the Jewish people, 17 million people. In their standard, that is good. After we commit a sin before God, our standard of what is good and what is evil is very confused. Because there is darkness. In this world, there is darkness, even Someone, some charity organization, they want to send uh, secondhand clothing to the Africa. And then they really collected lots of lots of secondhand clothes. And they put it to the big containers, then ship to Africa. Free. But you know what happened? In there, so many secondhand store is closed. Then people think clothing is free. They don't buy. Some kind of a, the system of economic is a real the breakdown. What happened? I thought giving free is good. But to someone else, some system is not good. Because we judge what is good, what is bad. This is darkness. In this darkness, real truth and real light come. We call his begotten God in God's bosom. That is John chapter 1, right? Who is that? Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ, the, the Son God, became a human being, we call him son. In the Bible, when you read, there are two terms, son of God and son of man. What is the meaning of the son of God and son of man today? We'll talk about son of man. Now, Jesus himself, he called himself 88 times in the New Testament he said, I am the son of man. He called himself son of man. We, we just have a, the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son. The son we call son, son of God, son of man. So today, what is that? 88 times he said, ho, huios. To Anthropos, which means the Son of God, 
Not just Son of God, the, the Son of God. Not just, I am Son of God, because my Father is man. I mean, Son of man, Son of man, I, I, I mean. I am Son of man. My Father is a man. But Jesus said that I am the Son of man, which means he's not just man. The man. In, in Adam, God said that you are perfect because you are good. But human beings, they lost their image of God. They made by God's image, but they lost God's image. So no longer in the whole world, there is not even a single one person, human being. I mean, the son of man. What do you mean by that? Because they all lost their image of God. So God sent his only begotten son. He became the son of man. He's the only one God made it is good. So through him, all the people who in Jesus Christ, they become children of God, son of, man, son of God. Hebrews chapter 2, 10 says, For it was fitting for him, for whom are all things and by whom are all things, in bringing many, what? In bringing many sons, to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Jesus Christ, he lead all the people, sons and daughters, whoever comes to Jesus Christ. Remember that last Sunday? Why God should be human being? Why God should be son of man? God loves you. Which means God is just. He has to punish you because we are sinners. He has to punish you, but also He loves you so much. His mercy wants to save you. But God cannot save you by Himself. What do you mean by that? Because God is a spirit. We are human beings. So God sent His Son. The word became flesh. The son of man, representative of all the humankind. And he died on the cross. She, he had to die. Die on the cross. Shed all the blood, the wrath of God, his pun God's punishment on Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. So whoever comes to him, God forgive them. This is God's way to save you. The word became flesh. Then we should believe that Jesus Christ is God. And also we should believe that Jesus is man with flesh. So 1 John 4, 2 said that this is how you can recognize the spirit of God. So you you have you you believer okay you have a spirit of God or not how can I recognize you you're a believer this is how you can recognize the spirit of God every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God you know heresy at the time they said oh Jesus is only glorious figure. Divine nature, no flesh. Then your sins, sins never be forgiven. Because no blood, no forgiveness. If Jesus says no body, no body, and then your sins are not forgiven. Because no blood. Looks like blood, but there is not blood. According to heresies. This is very important. Every spirit that acknowledge that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. This is very important. Jesus said that the name of Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. When you walk with Jesus Christ, 
God, because Jesus is God, God with you. But Jesus himself, he, he keeps saying that I am the son of man, son of man, son of man. Okay, what do you mean by the son of man? Then Jesus' disciples and the high priest and the Pharisees and teachers of law, they're confused. I thought you were a son of God. But he keeps saying that son of man, I, son of man, son of man, son of man. And so high priest asked him before he crucified. What did he say then? But Jesus reminded silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? Are you the Christ and son of the blessed one? Because they don't, they, they want to really accuse Jesus Christ. And Jesus remind them what his son of man is in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, especially Daniel. When you read Daniel, this word is coming out. Mark 14, 62, Jesus answered, yes, I am. I'm the Messiah. I'm the Son of God. Also, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Seems like a second coming in his judgment, right? Where is the Bible? Where is all these words in the Bible? That is Daniel. So high priests and teachers of law and all the Jewish people, they recognize, the, oh, he keeps saying that himself, son of man, which means he's real Messiah. Because Daniel already prophesied about this. Daniel chapter 7, 13, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the ancients of days, and they brought him near before him. Next verse. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. You know, Jesus mentioned about in the Daniel, I am that, the Son of Man. Then they suddenly understand, okay, Son of Man, Jesus is going to finish this whole world because he's going to be a judge. He is judge. He judge all world. So when you read Revelations, and Son of Man, also he judged people. Revelation chapter 14, 14 said, Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp what? Sickle. He's ready to harvest. He's ready to judge the people. Okay, I get it. The, Jesus is the only begotten Son. So Son has two things, Son of Man and Son of God. Son of God, we will talk about next Sunday. What is Son of Man? Son of Man is Messiah. Son of Man is Judge. Son of Man is God Himself. Then why, why we should believe the Son of Man? This is the last day. Time to almost judge. We ran to the judgment. Whether you believe or not, we ran to the judgment. Can you believe that? This is February 2023 now. Maybe 10 more years? 20 more years? I don't know. I'm here or not. Time's fly. Last February 2nd, Kelly and me is married 20, I mean 32 years wedding anniversary. It's passed already, 32 years. In, in the morning, I, I'm thinking about 32 years ago, I was so young. I really so young. I was so handsome, my wife was really ugly, and we married to get together, <laughs> and his wonderful time, 32 years is gone. Right away. 
30 years right away gone. Can you imagine that? 30, 30 years more, pretty soon. Then we face God's judgment. Then that judge, Jesus Christ, who, whom are you before him? Is he your Lord and Savior or just church? Jesus said, I don't know you. I never knew you. That is a terrible word. When you come to Jesus Christ, Jesus never say to you, I never knew you. Jesus said, well done, my son and my daughter. Because he became a mediator. What does the Bible say? 1 Timothy chapter 2, 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. The whole Bible talk about Jesus is God. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. We talk about next Sunday. Yeah. When then so many Bible talk about he is man, he is man, he is man. Because he is 100% man and 100% God. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. Do you know what that means? God and you. How can you reach out to God? How can you have a good relationship with your God, Father? Only the one mediator between you and God. His name is Jesus Christ. Man, Christ, Jesus. Jesus became a letter. Jesus became the way to God. So John chapter 151, Nathaniel, he, he talk, Jesus, Nathaniel talked with Jesus, and Jesus mentioned about this. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. What is that? Angels ascending and descending on to whom? Son of Man, Jesus Christ. Since there is no way to come to Father God, only Jesus Christ. Even today, God sent his angel to find out who is my son and my daughter. The spirit coming out to heaven or the angels. Ephesians chapter 4, 8. Therefore he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gift to men. See that? When he ascended to on high. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. From heaven, ascending and descending. And he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might feel all things. He might feel all things. We are empty. Our heart is so empty. Because feel like I got everything. I have a car, I have a book, I have a cell phone, I have a microphone, and I have many things. I have food, and well, our heart is always empty. God want to fill you up by His love, by His everlasting life. This is truth. This is His love. There is no other way, only Jesus Christ. Do you know why He Himself is Son of Man? Because He became lower. He really be a low, low people. He became weak. He became powerless. And this is grace. Let all people know that this weakness is our strong. This is blessing because mighty God became a human being on the cross as a human being. He lower play. He 
coming down in the lower place in the, on the cross. Apostle Paul finally knew that when he saw heaven, when he saw the glorious Christ, without weakness, you never see the strong. So when he was weak, he asked in God. 2 Corinthians 12, 8, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. He has really diseases. Someone, some theologians said in his eyes. Someone said his, his um, epilepsy is like a, when he preached the gospel, he just fall. So he asking Lord, please take away this things. Even his handkerchiefs, people get healed by the name of Jesus Christ. It's so powerful. But his own disease, he cannot heal. Even God, three times he asking God and God never answered his prayer. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. What has God said? But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. This is exactly what Jesus said as Son of Man. I am Son of Man. Which means, by his weakness, he wants to give you strong. By his weakness, he saved all the human beings who come to Jesus Christ. So he knows these principles. Okay. God teach me. Even God heal all the people through me. But my own weakness, God never answer me. And God's answer is what? My grace is sufficient for you. He realized that. For my power is made perfect in weakness. When you're weak, we can pray. For the first time I came to Canada, financially and language and everything is really weak. I don't know what, what should I do. God led me here to preach the gospel in English, but English is my the first, first language. This is hard. I couldn't understand what you say even now. How can I preach the gospel, Lord? Even financially. Even status. No landed immigration at the time. So I don't know what to do. Just God, God sent me here and I obey. I, I'm the weakest one in the, in the Canada at the time. So what should I do? My weakness, what? Make me power. You know what power? Nothing I can do. All I can do is pray. Lord, I got nothing. Please help me. Please lead me. Please guide me, Lord. Then the more I need, the more I, I pray to God. But after 20 years later, I got Canadian citizenship and uh, I, I got, uh, I have some little better English than 20 years ago, then prayer? No, not that much than 20 years ago. I know what is the mean by that. For my power is made perfect in weakness. When you're, win when you're in weak, this is time to pray. Then you know that God never abandons you. God with you. And Hebrews chapter 4, 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. You know what that means? Jesus became, he's almighty God. Jesus became weak. And he want to help you. I know what your situation is. I know your weakness. I know your illness. I know your hunger. I know your thirst. I've been there. I've done there. 
like a human being like you. And he sympathized you. Through that weakness, Apostle Paul said, the Lord, your grace, that is enough. Nothing else, the Lord. Your grace is good enough for me. Your grace. So as a believer, as a Christian, sometimes we, we short and lack many things. But at the time, you can pray to God. You can search in God. You can yawn in the presence of God. Then he will be with you. He helped you. You can see that. Oh, my weakness is my strong. Because God's grace. Can you say amen? Amen. Father, thank you, Lord God. In this moment, we pray. We are weak. We are empty. We are lonely. We are depressed. Father, in that moment, only we are asking your grace. Your grace from heaven, Father. Pour out each and every one who is asking you, Lord. Without you, Lord, we cannot live in this world. Without you, Lord, we cannot worship you. Without you, Lord, in the last day when Son of Man came, came, will come, we cannot stand in God's judgment. So with you, Lord, we worship you, we glorify your name. Only we want your grace every single time. Father, bless all the church family here, Lord God. Thank you, Father. May the grace of Father God, Lord Jesus Christ, and love of Father God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forever and ever. Everyone says, Amen.